Can, <laughs> all right. Um, so here's what we what we do. If we see a zero, we mark it with a Z and go to the right. Right? All right. Now what? Now, skip skip through the zeros. Skip through the zeros. Then what happens? If I see a 1, go to here and then skip through the 1's. Now I'm going to get a blank. Right? When I see a blank, I write the 0 down. And what do I do then? Turn back. Good. So, so Heather's a little bit ahead and let me, let me put this in since she already said this. Heather's already looking to the next iteration of the loop. When I come back next time, I'm not going to see a blank. I'm going to see what? Zero. I'm going to see zeros. Right? Because there's already a zero there. So when I come back the next time through this loop, I'm going to need this little bypass. Zero, zero, go to the right. Zero, zero, go to the right. And then you see a blank. I hope that's what you were saying. OK, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe so. There might, there might be a more minimal way for me to write this, but, but since I know I was, <laughs> I worked all night to make it right, if I stick with what I'm doing, I know nothing will go wrong. And, and there may be better ways to do it. All right, so this is that in case there's zeros, first do those first and then go to the blank. Otherwise, go directly to the blank. And now we've put our first zero. We're over here in the configuration, right? And now we're ready to move back, back, back and do our second iteration of the loop. So what happens? Back up over zero, zero, left. Now skip over the ones. So if I get a one, keep going left and skip over the ones. Zero, zero, left. Now I'm going back through these zeros. And sooner or later, I expect to see a, a Z. Zero, zero, left. And now I should see a Z, right? We Z, Z, R. And now I'm ready to do it all again. I'm facing right, I'm looking at a zero, I'm going to turn that to a Z and carry it over so and put it on the end. We haven't made any X's yet. Right. But, but Doug is thinking correctly that when I finally do put an X there, I will have to run through those X's between here and here. Let me put that in if anybody, you know, I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait. It, it's hard enough to get the idea just now. So, or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe, like Dimitri says, am I insulting your intelligence that this is? I, I don't think this is this is easy. I just think it's tedious. Now we have the whole first loop. <laughs> All right. Now we have the whole first loop. So I don't think of this as the inner loop. And we're going through it, 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 and we're all done going through it n times. It looks like like this. Zero to the n, one n squared, zero to the n. And now we're backing up. And for the first time here, after we're done with the ones, we don't get a zero. See that? Usually we have zeros to back through after these ones, but now we don't. Now we get a Z. Right. This is the outer loop. This is Z, zero, left. We're turning the Zs back into zeros so that we can go back and go from here and have it be the same way it looked when we started. These are getting turned back into zeros now. Z, zero, left. Turn them all back into zeros. Now we're going to come up with a problem. See it? How do you know what? 
Yeah, how do you keep from going off the left end and falling down a huge cliff, right? Well, oh, I should have thought of that before, huh? I'm dead. Here's what I needed to do at the very beginning. And I'm not going to put this in the machine because it's one of the exercises in your problems at five in another week or so. But at the very beginning, I needed to take this machine and turn it into this. I needed to take the string and push everything over and put a special symbol on the left end. So that at this point, instead of falling off the left end, I hit that symbol. That shifting is a very nice exercise for you to learn how to do. It's only a four state machine and it's kind of a a little get ready to do a real computation. Because any real computation you do better have a left end marker so you don't fall off the end. So you kind of always do this. This is like initializing your string to be really ready to be used. And you can do that with a five state machine. So take my word for it, you can do that. Assume it was done and then at this point I'm not going to fall off the left end. Instead what am I going to do? I'm going to hit the dollar sign. Okay? Give me one of those. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Smarty, you're an X. But we haven't put any X's down. So wait. Just wait on that. All right, so dollar sign, dollar sign, go to the right. That's my turnaround point. Then what? Before we go back to the top, we have to remember that we just did this inner loop once. So we've got to mark one of those zeros with an X. 0, x, r, okay? Mark one of the zeros with an x, then what? Got to go back to the beginning, so 0, 0, left, x, x, left. Scoop back through all the zeros and x's until you get to the very beginning, and when you hit the dollar sign again, you're ready to go. Okay, um, wait, so the, zero x r assumes that the first that's is it going to work on the first one. Good. So what do I need? I need a loop here that does what? Uh, x x r. Very good. Good, Doug. Right. I need to skip through all the x's that happen to already be there. Go back to the first zero I see. Right. And when I do that. I mark that zero with an X. I turn back the other way. You go back through the zeros, go back through the other X's, back to the beginning, you're ready to start again. Now the difference here is, now that we're going through, when we get to this point, this might not be a zero, right? This might be a X. So here's what we're going to do. You know, Z's, zeros turn into Z's and then they turn back. So X's are going to turn into Y's, and then we'll turn them back into X's. That's the way it goes. X turns into a Y, go to the right. And then skip through all the X's. And when you see a zero, head over here and continue skipping through the zeros. So the key thing is that if you're looking at a zero, change that to a Z. But if you're looking at an X, change that to a Y. But the purposes of those symbols are to keep track of how much we've copied of those n. I know, it's a lot of stuff. I know. But that's just the way you do Turing machines. It's just the way it is. That's why you don't do them too often, or too many. Uh, we're never going to be in that state where we're on an x and heading straight into a 1, so it's OK, because we're going to stop when we get to there and not do that's, that's true. That's true. I think we need to add a couple more transitions on this inner loop. Just make sure we get everything. This is all right. This is all right. This is all. Do you get this feeling like when we're all done, we'd have to debug this thing? Good, because that's just the same as your programs, right? You plan and you plan. You think you're getting everything. You nail it down. You think of all the things that might go wrong. You fix it, you fix it, you fix it. And then two years later, there's a memory leak, right? You don't know where it is. And you debug and debug, and you finally find it. And it's the same with Turing machines. You can't debug this any more accurately than you can debug your programs. It's a hard job. Uh, this way, what about this arrow? What else might I go through here? The Y's. The Y's. Right. When I finish bringing through a zero to the other side, 
I turn the 